today I'm literally talking about something I've wanted to talk to for so long, and that is the English major. Hey guys, what's up? It's Lainey, and today I'm talking about the English major slash my English degree slash all the questions that you've asked me on Twitter about the English degree. I do want to preface this and say that this was my experience with the English major and that my experience will vary very differently from every other English major you'll talk to. So this is just my personal subjective of experience about the English major. Before we move on, I'm going to uh, show you my credentials in talking about this subject, and that is my English degree, which I keep near my printer. I graduated the University of Iowa in May of 2014, so I've been out of college now for three years, and it says my name, it says I got a Bachelor of Arts degree, and it was in English. I'm just gonna jump into the questions that people ask me. This is a good question to start with, and that is, what is your response to people who think an English degree is a waste of time and money? Yes, the English degree is very looked down upon because what can you do with an English degree if you don't wanna teach? Which is the situation that I was in. I didn't want to teach, so I was getting English degree for what, question mark? My minor that I got was in history, which is probably the double combo, horrible combination of liberal arts degrees, which is those two. Since high school, I wanted to be a writer. I knew in the back of my mind if I was gonna commit to the English degree, I knew that I would, I would have to get a job after I graduated that wasn't in something I wanted to do. I couldn't graduate and be a full-time writer. Right now, I have a job in healthcare. I work at a hospital. When it comes to English majors who are trying to find a job after college, it's all about how you market yourself. I was extremely good at interviews because I knew how to word things. I knew how to sell myself and I knew how to bring in examples of my background with an English degree into the jobs I was applying for. Was I applying to be a doctor or a nurse? Absolutely not. Right now I work with admissions and registration and finance. Like that's kind of all of my things combined. And companies are always looking for great writers. They're looking for people who understand language. And I know without a doubt that not saying my English is superior than the average person, but when I did proofread like lab reports or anything else for my non-English major friends in college, I saw a huge difference that made me realize I was learning quite a bit in college with my English background. So yeah, I definitely think it's all about how you sell yourself. I make pretty good money for what I do. I mean, I work in a place where I never thought I'd work. I never ever thought I would end up in a hospital when I was in college. I knew I always wanted to be a writer, but I also knew that I needed to get a job to support myself while I wrote on the side, which is what I'm doing right now. Maybe that is a major that people definitely look down upon because what it's just a questionable, what can you do with that major? And the, the answer to that is you can do a lot. You're opening yourself up to hundreds of possibilities in the job market and I think that's what's overwhelming where it feels like you don't have any place to fit but I'm I was I was lucky enough that I already worked in the hospital for the, my college position I worked in the um, hospital gift shop and I had already had my foot in the door any corporations I think are always looking for English majors I applied to ACT I applied to a lot of different departments in the hospital and I got um, from internal medicine to uh, patient financial services which is what I ended up going into but all these different pockets of different departments wanted to interview me. That was a long answer to that one. <laughs> Next question is, do you experience genre wars during your degree, aka adult lit writers thinking they're better than the genre lit? How do you cope? This is from Julia and I love, love this question because I am so, so passionate about this topic. This is definitely relating more to the creative writing side. The English track, which is what I was in, was very straightforward with literature. I got concentration areas, which is when I took more classes of certain topics or time periods that went on to my degree as my concentration areas. My concentration areas were 20th, 21st century literature slash creative writing because I took a lot of creative writing, creative writing classes. I went to the University of Iowa. It has the oldest slash number one creative writing program in the country. And with that came a lot of genre wars from what the question asked. All of my creative writing classes were taught by TAs that were in the MFA writing program, which is Masters of Fine Arts. So they were trying to get their masters in 
creative writing. My favorite creative writing class actually didn't even count towards the English major. It was just kind of a fun writing class for non-English majors. And that was my favorite writing class because it was genre crime fiction. There was no pressure and pretentiousness and there was no stigma attached to genre writing. I feel so bad talking crap, but there's this huge, huge pretentiousness that I feel like Iowa has towards genre writers. They're very big into literary. I was told once in one of my classes from a one-on-one -on -one with one of my TAs that my writing slash genres I wanted to write in was more fitted for the New York Times bestseller list than the Pulitzer Prize, which is what Iowa liked to produce. Um, I just remember sitting there thinking, is the New York Times bestseller list a bad thing? Because that's what I want to be on? She made it sound like it was a bad thing, and that happened my junior year, and I kind of realized that writing at Iowa wasn't exactly maybe for me. It just rubbed me the wrong way. It made me feel like my writing was lesser because I didn't write literary fiction. It definitely depends on where you want to go, and it's definitely scoping out the different programs. Um, I don't regret going to Iowa because I learned so much on the English literary track, but the creative writing aspect definitely discouraged me from writing, and I wrote some terrible short stories that were considered literary fiction just because I felt like I had to do that, and I wasn't producing my best work at all, and I hated it. The two things that I like to write, genre fiction, crime, and young adult fiction. So it was definitely, I felt like I didn't necessarily belong in those classes because I wasn't writing or I didn't want to write what everybody else was writing and it sucked. I also, in a fit of like rage, I wrote this blog post like a few weeks ago about my experiences with that, that I just like is sitting on my computer and I'm not quite sure if I'm brave enough to post it, but now since I've like just did all that on camera, might as well post it. What was your favorite class you took in the English program? And this is from Riley. I took so many great literature classes. Uh, one of my favorites was uh, Film in the Modern Novel. We would read the book and watch the movie for it. This was the first time I read Dracula by Bram Stoker. And then we watched the Gary Oldman Dracula. Didn't Francis Ford Coppola, I think he directed that one. The professor makes the class and I loved that professor. I also took an ancient uh, civilization literature class with that same professor where we read the Epic of Gilgamesh, uh, obviously the Odyssey and the Iliad, and I loved that class as well because he had such a way of teaching ancient myth that that was like one of my favorite classes, especially because I've already read um, the Odyssey and the Iliad like three times before I took that class and I still learned something new from the text the way he taught it. Like I had so many favorite classes. Another one that I remember was uh, detective fiction. So that's like the first time I was like really introduced to uh, noir. We read like Raymond Chandler and Dashiell Hammett and I just loved that class as well. I also feel like I should mention these two, but um, I took a zombie literature class which we had to create a hybrid last project and my last project was a tumbler on zombies and I would compare like different uh, different things about the zombie genre. Like I compared um, fast zombies for slow zombies. I talked about the creatures in I Am Legend from with Will Smith and I kind of like went back and forth on whether they were zombies or vampires. And the other class that was really interesting was called Writers on Drugs where we read books and discussed different writers personal lives. One of my favorite books I read in that class and still is my favorite book today was um, Lesson Zero. That's definitely one of the things I really miss about college is finding those classes. Next question is did you have to share your work with other people in your class? If so, how did you feel about it? So, um, and then actually someone else asked, um, how do creative writing classes work usually? So these ones kind of are together because uh, I can talk about both of them. I took about six or six to eight creative writing classes. They were all pretty much set up the same. So you'd be in a class of around 15 to 25 people usually, but that can vary between how big your university is or not. For me, they were all once a week classes and they were three hour classes. Usually around the first 20 minutes, they sometimes we would free write, sometimes we wouldn't. I didn't really like free writing because I feel like that's forcing me to write and I just want things to come naturally to me. So I never felt like my free writing was very good. And then sometimes you, they would randomly call on you or you would volunteer to read it and aloud and 
I hated that. Then we would kind of fall into like a lesson for the day depending on the teacher. Uh, sometimes there would be lessons, sometimes there wouldn't. Sometimes we would be reading um, craft essays or sometimes like a few of my classes we would actually read books and we would come and discuss them. Like my reading and writing young adult fiction class we read Feed by M.T. Henderson which I hated. We read The Book Thief by Mark Suzik, I think, which I also did not like. And then we read The Hunger Games, which was the first time I read it and I loved it, obviously. Then it'd be workshopping for like the rest of the time. And usually what ha would happen with ours, two or three classmates, we would have read their short story from the previous week and we would mark up everything wrong with it or good with it. And then we would write them a letter kind of saying, what was good about it, what needs work on it, and what was good about it again. And then we would workshop each piece around the room and we'd talk about it. Usually the way that they picked who would do it when, at the beginning of the semester, the teacher would pass around a sheet and you would kind of just like pick what what week you would want your your piece to be workshopped. I always picked the middle, never wanted to go first. I always wanted to go in the middle because I'd like to gauge what everybody else was writing and how I was gonna like these people. And I didn't wanna go to the end because then I knew I'd procrastinate. So I still, you know, I knew myself back then. On the question of whether, how did you feel about it? Exposure to critiquing is obviously part of the trade. I feel like I took the teacher's critiques way more seriously than the other students. I would pick people in the class that I felt like were good critiquers and I'd only pay attention to theirs and then the other people I kind of just like mm, how I feel about it I feel like I was pretty neutral about it I mean I was taking out of the class what I wanted to honestly I think they're very helpful like I'm not trying to bash creative writing courses at all like I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for the creative writing classes I took. Would you recommend doing an MA in creative writing to someone who hasn't studied something different, in my case, foreign languages? So MAs are masters, um, master degrees. I thought about doing an MFA program, but when it comes down to it, I feel like I wouldn't get anything out of it, mainly because I don't want to leave right now. I don't want to move somewhere else, uh, especially because I don't have the money to do that. And I really like the job I have now. I have great benefits and a great salary, so why would I give that up? And I don't want to go to the MFA program in Iowa because I knew I know I won't be happy there. I mean, I know I have more to learn when it comes to writing, but I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about MFA programs as a whole. I don't know. I'm a really, I can't answer this question. I'm sorry. <laughs> the best worst parts of being an English major. The best parts of it is that I know language way more than I did before. I know literature way more than I did before and I really enjoyed I really enjoyed it. I loved being an English major. The worst parts about it is that when you're taking four to five English classes every semester you're reading quite a lot. So you're reading about five books a week and then most likely you might have to write a paper on it. Uh, you might not yet until the middle of the semester or the end of the semester. I feel like I'd write I'd write five to fifteen papers a semester depending on the class and what the um, re requirements were for the class. That is definitely draining. It makes you better as a writer when you're writing critically like that. I feel like I learned so much more as a writer in an academic sense than a creative sense because creative writing and academic writing are really really different. I mean I liked releasing my creativeness into um, my own fiction but I actually really loved analyzing the certain aspects in books. I read a paper on the femme fatale which I really really loved and I enjoyed writing that because I liked looking and finding my sources to back up my claims. My gen ed classes that I took mostly my freshman and sophomore year um, I would still write a lot in those classes for my different papers and my writing was so much better than non-English majors in the class just because we're learning language in a different way that people just don't learn about in non-English major classes and that's not a bash. I mean I know nothing about science and I'm, I suck at math because you don't learn that in English. You don't learn properties. I mean, I don't even know what terms are. <laughs> I did horrible in animal bio. Thank God that class was curved. The next question, this is also from Jillian. Did you know from the start what you wanted to use your degree for or were you just studying it because it was interesting to you? So. Let's talk about how I became an English major. My junior year of high school, when I had what I thought was a really cool English teacher, and we wrote these really cool stories, 
and we had one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher where she would talk to us about our writing and I wrote this bomb story in my 17 year old mind about a mafia. When I told her I wanted to be an English major, like that's what I was going to go to college for, she told me that I shouldn't be an English major. She said, you're never going to find a job. I had a friend who was an English major who had to go back to school to be something else so that she could get a job. So then I was like, crap, what am I going to do? Because this is what I want to do with my life. For one, f that teacher. I made the mistake of listening to her. If you take anything away from this video, just let it be that you should never let someone else decide your future for you. And I did that. So my freshman year of college, I was a social work major because I thought that's maybe something I'd want to do. I mean, I kind of want to do that. And that lasted a semester. And then I was an anthropology major. And I did really love that major. I did. The reason why I wanted to be an anthropology major is because I wanted to be a mashup of Indiana Jones and Evie from The Mummy. I was an anthropology major for like over a year and I took all the classes. I started to get my museum studies certificate to work in museums because then that's what I decided I wanted to do. I wanted to work in museums and I really liked that and if I could go back I would probably maybe finish out the museum studies certificate so I kind of quit halfway through and I don't know why because I really enjoyed it. I kept going back to this English thing. I kept taking English classes. I was taking creative writing classes through those one and a half years of not being an English major. I don't know if it was a profound moment that I remembered this or something, but I was just like, what am I doing? I want to be a writer, so why am I not being an English major? I'm lucky enough where I have parents that really support me and they just want me to be happy. I think in the backs of their minds, both my mom and my stepdad and my dad and my stepmom, they were kind of wondering, why weren't you an English major when you like to write? Maybe in the backs the further backs their mind, they were wondering, is she gonna get a job after this? But they were really supportive and they totally supported my change to be an English major. And I'm pretty sure my mom was like, I think she felt more relieved that I changed to be an English major because she knows that's what I wanted. So I think she was just like, okay, finally she's on track to do what she wants to do. Well, that's why I kind of became an English major because that's just, I wanted to be a writer and I felt like why am I studying something else if I want to be a writer long term when I should be learning the most I can about literature and language and writing. And do you need to be an English major to be a writer? No. But for me personally, I felt like I wouldn't be a good writer unless I learned all these things. If I hadn't been an English major, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at today in my writing. I'm very thankful for the education that I received in, in literature. And you don't have to do that. If you want to be a writer, but you're going to school for something else, that's perfectly fine. Just take some creative writing classes or a few literature classes. Have maybe English as a minor if you if that's something you're interested in. The next question is would you say creative writing is an, a worthwhile degree or is do-it-yourself the best approach? And that was from Miriam. Creative writing major is something different and I don't know if I can really talk about that just because that wasn't my major so I'm not quite sure. Again I feel like you could probably market yourself the same way if <laughs> If you were a creative writing major, you still have the same skills that a lot of writers do and companies look for people who are good writers. I'm glad that I did the English major than the creative writing major because I feel like I learned a lot more about literature and language in the English degree than I would have in creative writing, which is more about craft. I mean, I have so many people on my shelf right here that probably were not English majors. They probably went to school for something else. Maybe some of them didn't go to school at all. So. It, I mean, I think it really depends on the person. My question is going in, can you just write or do you have to teach with this degree because I want to write only. I was the same way. <laughs> I didn't want to teach, I wanted to just write. And that's totally an option. My English degree is just for English, it's not a teaching degree at all. What do you recommend to improve your writing and fiction and what is the best option doing an English degree or a creative writing course? If you're looking to improve your writing, take a creative writing class. If your schedule allows it, definitely take one. Just just take one um, and you can kind of gauge whether you like this or not. Same thing with an English degree. You do have your like gen eds. I'm thinking University of Iowa, so this is, we had to take rhetoric and interpretation of literature, which is, interpretation of literature was kind of just like a regular high school English class. I would suggest taking something outside of the gen ed realm, like, takes a class that sounds interesting to you in the English department. Usually English courses are still going to be set up like a 
high school English class, but it's just harder and more in depth with a text. And, and you're also just writing papers more for um, English courses. Those were all the questions um, that I received about the English major. If you have any more questions, definitely leave them down below. I'm happy to answer them. Once again, I will leave you with the biggest advice I have, which is never let someone else decide your future. I hope you guys all have a really great day and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.